looking at ancient maps, reveals strange and beautiful things. Here is a very old map made by Giovanni Lirdo, and is dated to 1442, almost 700 years ago. Before the 1500s, world maps showed east as north and west as south. Yes, the North Pole was at a different location. If I tilt the map, you will recognize some places. Historians say maps before the 1500s don't show the Americas and Australia, because they were later discovered by Columbus. That's not true. What's true? There were maps for the general public, and those reserved for the elite. Also, the larger world, including the Americas, was flooded at the time. Once the waters receded, it was repopulated as the New World. The Antarctic, or South Pole, the east of the ancients, is a red-colored region, perhaps because it's been destroyed by this time, as explained in previous videos. A closer look reveals amazing things. On the left, the Black Sea. Above it, is Mount Ararat and Noah's Ark, so says the inscription. Beside the Black Sea, you see Turkey, and further to the right, Jerusalem at the Mediterranean. This is exciting to me. Perhaps that the Great Flood was not 10,000 years ago, but much more recent. But if all the stuff they say in the Bible were more recent, you'd see it on maps, I was told. And here it is. Sure, maybe the map shows where religious scripture tell us the Ark landed. But, maps of the medieval times, consistently show other places from biblical times too. On this map we see an actual structure of the Ark on top of Mount Ararat, as if the site could be visited by tourists. Another surprise is. Across the top of Jerusalem Tower. According to mainstream history, the Christian occupation of Jerusalem ended in 1187. In 1442, according to official history, Jerusalem was run by Muslims. Why is it still shown as Christian in 1442? Is it because Christian and Muslim was part of the same movement in those days? Another odd one. Babylonia, or Babylon, exists. That was also supposed to have fallen thousands of years before. Here it's not in Iraq but rather in Egypt. A mistake by the cartographer, or a truth that got lost in time. I tilted it to get in a better idea. Taking the Red Sea as orientation, Babylonia appears to be where today the city of Luxor is. The main objection by academics is that these maps are historical, not actual maps. They are meant to tell people where historical places were, from a religious perspective. This explanation is, in my view, wrong. All ancient maps of the time, show these places. None of them are labeled historical maps, but simply world map. According to old maps, the terrestrial paradise was on the far east coast. On this map, it looks like the area today known as southeastern China. Its buildings tower many times higher than any other, at its center there is some kind of circle, possibly a portal to a higher realm. The only other discernible name in the section, a bit further down, is India, indicating that the Paradiso Terresto was in fact in what is today Asia. I tried to find out more about the location of this terrestrial paradise, but got mostly grainy low-resolution images. Can't any university afford high-resolution images? My first guess was that it's somewhere along the coast of southeast China. But I could be wrong because the world underwent massive change after several cataclysms, including a shift in the poles. The only place in fact that looks similar post and pre-flood, is Europe and Russia. If the geography remained unchanged, it roughly corresponds to the location of modern Shanghai. It's interesting, that paradise is shown as some kind of city with massive towers. I always thought of it as a garden. The interesting thing about this is that portraying it as a city, revealed a different knowledge than we have today. I have read the religious scriptures several times and don't recall reading anything about paradise being a city. Both of these images imply that, at its center, there was some kind of circular object. I must have missed that part in Sunday school too. Going even further back in time, this is the De Evesham world map, Evesham Abbey Gloucestershire from 1390. Here we see a similar view of the world as in the 1442 map, with east being north and west being south. This is how we view the world today. Either the map is incomplete or wrong, or we are seeing results of major upheavals. Much of Africa is missing. On the left we see land to the west of Europe, that possibly later became the Americas. Jerusalem is the center of the world, again depicted with a cross. The Evesham world map at the far north, today far east, we again see again that terrestrial paradise. 
this time more explicit. Adam, Eve, and the serpent crawling up the Tree of Life. Is that central circular object we see on other maps the Tree of Life? On those maps, it doesn't look like a tree, but some kind of tech device. On the first map, it looks like a portal. We're not dealing with a mere metaphor here. It's not a historical map. According to ancient maps, and I've viewed a dozen, I'm only showing a few here, there was an actual physical location in the far north, or east as we now see it, called the terrestrial paradise. Considering that the ancients viewed east as north, it is likely that the cataclysm changed the Earth's poles. It is likely that the pole shift caused the flood. It is possible that this event was encoded in the symbol of the cross. The most common cross I see on old maps is this. But the most common cross we see today is this. The ancient maps show this cross at the center of the world, possibly indicating the center from which north, south, east and west are determined. I've seen several maps show circles at the four corners of Earth, as in this cross. In the new cross, the center is slightly removed, off balance. Is that an indication of the Earth's poles having moved? I'm familiar with ancient beliefs about sleeping with your feet in the direction of north or east and never west or south. Is that because paradise is east, in the old days, or north, in the new days? An alternative location proposal for the terrestrial paradise. If we consider the actual distance from India and Jerusalem on the maps, paradise is smack in the center of Tibet. If true, then, much of the Chinese mainland we see today, was added to the continent after the disaster. I'll explain later in the video. If we go back even further, to the year 1235, we find a completely different understanding for the world, once again. This is the The Ebsterf World Map. It is my view that a great flood occurred in 1250. This 1235 map then, shows Earth before the flood. It has little resemblance to the world we know, no matter how we turn or tilt it. There is no Mediterranean, no Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. There are some waterways and a lot of land. I tilted to our modern perspective. Perhaps this could be a map of the whole larger Earth, including the large continent today known as Antarctica and the lower half from this tilted perspective, and the world we know today in the upper half. I recognize Jerusalem at the center and the Christian iconography at the top, terrestrial paradise and center, but not much else. This pre-flood world is unfamiliar. The Godhead appears to be at the center of all waterways, imbuing his consciousness into the water in all directions. A close-up, again, reveals the location of the terrestrial paradise north of India. North of India we find Tibet. There is no place in the world with more legends about a terrestrial paradise called Shambhala, Shangri-La and other names. The belief was so common, that, in 1937, Hollywood made a movie out of it, titled Lost Horizon. Perhaps this is why, in some maps, paradise is shown as a top high mountains. One of the images on the map shows the location of the Tower of Babel. Academics assure us that this too, like everything else, is merely historical, and everyone knows that the tower no longer existed in the 1200s. I no longer believe that. I believe that the Dark Ages are precisely so dark, and documents about them are missing, because knowledge about these events was removed from public view. Or, did you know that the medieval people had a different North Pole? And a terrestrial paradise on their maps? The eastern part of the map, today southern Antarctic, shows horned men, nude people, and giants, as explained in the previous video about a fertile and populated ancient Antarctic. As usual, dragons are also part of the show. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.